So what are we trying to learn from Buddha, Shakyamuni Buddha, our original teacher? The first step is to achieve right awakening. Only when we are rightly awakened can we truly understand how to navigate out of this suffering. Without right awakening, we can get out of this puzzle. Even if we want to go to the pure land, which is liberation from the puzzle of suffering, we can't go there because we are not letting go of the afflictions that bind us here, of the attachments. Only when you have attained the level of right awakening are you qualified to be liberated from the cycle of life and death, liberated from the sufferings to happiness. Otherwise, departing from this principle, even though we're chanting Amitofo, worshipping the Buddha, or listening to the Dharma, it's all about fortune rather than the true merits that are able to bring you to liberation. So it's all about a pure heart. This is a very concise summary of right awakening. When you hear right awakening, it means having a pure heart. Right awakening equals to having a pure heart. Having a pure heart means that you are unmoved by the phenomena that happens to you outside, whether it be people or things or calamities or anything you're unmoved. Only then are you considered as having a pure heart. If one achieves the pure heart or right awakening in Buddhism, what is the title we confer to these people? If you have achieved right awakening in Buddhism, in this educational system, what is the status that would be conferred upon you? We must be clear on this very important terminology used. There are titles like university degrees that are conferred upon people reaching right awakening, and this title is called Arhat. So if you have achieved right awakening, you will be called an Arhat. Just like today, when you graduate from the first level of university study, it's called a bachelor's degree. So Arhat is the same in Buddhist education. Arhat, Bodhisattva, and Buddha are the common titles that we confer to people upon achieving different degrees of awakening. If you achieve the first step of right awakening, you are called an Arhat. Why is one called an Arhat? Because you are no longer twisted in views and ideas. You see things clearly. Your greed, hatred, and ignorance does not exist. It will not come up. It's cleared. An arhat does not have entanglements with people and matters because arhats do not attach to the notion of the body as themselves. That means no more ego. They are no longer attached to their bodies. So what does bodhisattva mean? We will talk about this next time. So Arhat is the first level title in Buddhist education. I hope it's clear for you guys. The best way to define Arhat is one having a pure heart. Pure heart means right awakening. Why is it pure? Because they no longer have erroneous views and ideas. And that means it's no longer twisted no longer biased. They have no hatred, they have no greed, they have no ignorance, they have no afflictions, and they do not entangle with people and matters because they no longer attach with the self. From here, we hopefully learn and experience that the Buddhist education system is actually different from the worldly religious and secular education that we are going through right now. So what do we actually learn from Buddha? We must be clear in this regard. Buddha taught us to cultivate the realization of truth, to cultivate right awakening. Only when we achieve right awakening can we solve the fundamental problem and be truly liberated 
from the pain that has plagued us forever and no longer go through all of this again and again and again. Because only when you learn, truly learn, truly listen to Buddha's words and truly use your ability to learn will you achieve liberation. That's the first lesson. If we look at the worldly joy and sufferings, starting from the obvious ourselves, we have to go through the eight sufferings of life. These are sufferings that we have to live through every day without a way out. For example, if you look at our world of pain and pleasure, if there is pain, there is always pleasure. If there is pleasure, it will always be followed by pain. In the Pure Land, they call it ultimate bliss for a reason, because they only have real bliss, instead of having pain following it around. But over here, we have a lot of pain that follows the pleasure. From the perspective of pain and pleasure, the most obvious, the most easily observed part of suffering that we have to go through is that no one can avoid birth, age, illness, and death. Can you avoid it? No, right? And on top of these four, we have the suffering of not getting what we wish for, what we love. We can't get it. What we like, we can't get. And then the sixth one is our loved ones leaving us. There was a case where in this form of suffering, when a loved one's leaving us, there was an old lady who laid on the bed dying, and when she died, she left her eyes open, so she did not go in peace. When she passed away, her eyes kept looking in one direction, one place, because she could not let go of her most beloved granddaughter. So this is another type of suffering, even until death. Then we have the suffering of encountering someone or something you dislike. So all of these combined with the suffering of the five skandhas compose the eight sufferings of life. No one can escape them from here. These are the eight sufferings that we all have to go through every day. So does Buddha have any way to help us get out of this? Buddha told us if we practice Buddhism, if we practice the path he gave to us, which is right awakening, just with the first step, right awakening, we can be free from these eight sufferings. For example, today in the cultivation group, some of us are seniors, like 60 or 70 and above. We think about, does Buddhism help us to relieve or liberate us from this phenomena of age, of illness? To be honest, if we truly cultivate the teaching, if we truly understand the teaching and use it, you would not need doctors or medicine. You can recover from your ailments as well as prevent them. There are cases like that. Why? What's the reason? Including myself, we should think about it and reflect on this. What are the reasons? Because they have realized the truth. Before we realize the truth, we keep asking, how did the illness come about, right? Beyond the medical, the physical, observable part, I'm talking about how it arised, how it came into being, and what were the conditions that led to this illness to develop and spread, and what are the consequences and effects from this illness in general. Buddha told us, we can avoid illness. Humans can actually avoid illness. People can avoid illness. But we need to know why. Why do we have illness in old age? Why do we have these sufferings? Because the root of these sufferings is our wandering thoughts that keep generating and regenerating the same conditions that lead us to suffering. 
So if you use a more common term, we're thinking everywhere. We're thinking left, right, up and down. We are always thinking. We never stop. We never rest. We're not honest in a sense. Our mind is not honest. It's like the monkey in our mind keeps jumping and jumping and jumping, one thought after another. Therefore, Buddha told us, as long as you have wandering thoughts, even a sage doctor or some cultivated person like Hua Tuo in China, who was a very, very good doctor, who healed a lot of ailments, can't treat your problem, this kind of problem, this illness.